Do vacuum tubes color the sound? Charlie in Perry, Georgia would like to know, and he says, I'd love to own PS Audio gear in the future as my budget allows. Let me get my two boys through college first. <laughs> Please, we'll be, we've been here 45 years, Charlie. We'll, we'll, we'll still be here for you. Okay, here's my question. How do vacuum tubes transmit an audio signal and how does that color the sound? I have added a tube buffer between my DAC and preamp to experiment with different tubes. I look forward to your explanation. Cheers. Charlie. P.S. When I am back in Colorado, I will make plans to tour P.S. Audio. Thanks for the standing invitation. Yes, well, as a reminder, you are all most welcome and encouraged to come visit us. I mean, you'll see our 3D machine here, which is nothing. So, uh, look, at, look at this woofer. Oh my God, isn't that gorgeous? There's all kinds of cool stuff running around here. I just got a note from a lovely UK couple who are planning their vacation in the summer around a visit to PS Audio. So we, we love having visitors uh, come and, and, and encourage it. So the question is this little guy, how does that tube work, right? I mean, seems like, uh, Seems like a pretty cool thing. Well, tubes and transistors perform the same function, and that is a valve. In fact, tubes are called, or once were called, valves. Why? Well, because a vacuum tube, let's just talk about vacuum tubes for a moment. But they, like transistors, have a handle that turns up and down, and a gazinta and a gazata. Okay? Three things. Gazinta, gazata, and a valve to turn up how much goes from the gazinta goes to the gazata, right? And our gazintas are current, voltage and current. Okay? So you got a power supply. Think of it like water sitting up in this big storage tank called our power supply. And as I turn this valve, that water is going to start streaming to the gozauta, which is one of these pins on the tube. And the more gozauta, the more current and voltage that goes out, the higher the level, the louder the sound, if we modulate it in, in a way of, of, the, of music, which is, as we know, music takes this, this woofer and it, it, or whatever, and it moves it up and down, up and down, up and down, and it pressurizes the air and we hear sound. Well, that moving up and down, that is being controlled by this valve. And this valve is controlled by another valve, or from maybe your phono cartridge, or maybe the output of your DAC or CD player, okay? So we have a little voltage, and that's what's cool about these. You know, this, this, this valve, just a little bit of pressure on this valve turns a whole lot of voltage and current on its output. So with very little happening over here, I get a lot happening over here at the output. And that's, I mean, same transistors and tubes, same sort of thing, okay? And that little bit, I just can tickle that with uh, a voltage, like say out of a phono cartridge. I can pop that into this one input the input's called a grid, and that, that grid or a base on a transistor is where we tickle you know, the input, and that's our little valve, the turn on, turn off kind of guy. And then at the top here, we've got something called the plate, <coughs> which is where you know, the big holding tank of water is sitting. And then <coughs> the, um, the emitter, what, what do they call emitter? I'm, I'm, um, uh, I, I'm not a vacuum tube kind of guy. Grid plate, cathode. Sorry, there you go, the cathode. So, eh, I'm old, I forget stuff, right? So there's, there's a emitter base and, and um, collector on a transition. But anyway, that, that's all taking us away from the main question. So we have this valve and it runs up and down. So why does a tube color the sound? I'm not sure it really does. But if it were to do that, it's because its harmonic structure is different in a more pleasing manner than a transistor. And by a transistor, I mean a bipolar transistor. So 
a bipolar transistor has stuff, harmonics, distortion that's generated uh, when it operates, and that is in the third harmonic, meaning the odd harmonics, which will, um, this, we don't have enough time to go through all of that, but trust me that a third harmonic is generally accepted as being a little bit kind of off key, where a second harmonic, which is what a vacuum tube produces, um, is more of a ah, kind of a, a, you know, where you hit the resolve. So one is more of a, a, of a likable sound and the other is more of a sound. Now, as engineers, we want to keep those harmonics, you know, at, at, at bay. Um, and your tube buffer may have pumped those up a little bit, and that may be why. But in general, tubes are voltage devices. They are very gentle on the sound, and they really do, in the right places, help a lot. I hope that isn't too complicated and helps your understanding a little bit. Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.